Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got something really cool and something I'm very excited about building right now. This is the brand new 116 scale M551 Sheridan full option kit from Tamiya. And uh, if you're not familiar with these, Tamiya's been making these full option kits for a while now, starting God, many years ago with the Tiger One, and what it means by full options is this tank does everything. It's got a searchlight on it, the barrel um, elevates, turret rotates, all the tracks work in all the different directions, all kinds of other accessory things that it can do on it. There's a monstrous soundboard and uh, speaker inside here, so it has the real sound of the real tank. So when you turn it on and run it, you're not hearing just like an RC motor, you're hearing the real sounds of a tank. And this is, like I said, it's brand new. It's just coming out into the, uh, the US market. We have our RC unit and of course, this monster with lots and lots of metal parts and screws and kind of stuff that's kind of a nice change of pace from model building. We will be doing model building, uh, of course, in this kit because there's a lot of plastic and we'll weather it up and kind of beat it up like a, uh, like a Vietnam era tank. But we'll just have some fun in the meantime. So, let's get started. Okay, we're going to tear into the assembly of the uh, the lower hull, which you can see right here is all metal, and we will be attaching some of the parts from here and some other parts on here using screws. the The instructions are called out in the sense that we start off with a a bag, which is this bag right here. So there's lots, of, boy, lots and lots of screws, just an a bag alone. So this will make it a little bit easier rather than trying to figure out if we need one screw out of this one or out of this one. You can see just bags and bags of parts. So we're going to open up these, get them all organized, and then we'll start screwing some parts together. Oh, and one other quick thing I was talking to you about in the very beginning of the intro about the uh, the soundboard. Here is the big speaker that is on the back of this thing. So we're going to really get some nice sound come out of this uh, this tank. Okay, we've got the uh, the faux suspension pieces in the back attached here. There are four self-tapping screws. Be very careful. You don't want to over tighten any of those because you'll strip out the plastic on there. They're very, very shallow screws. So we've got all those in there. Now we are putting the uh, bearings inside the plastic pieces which are made out of ABS. Occasionally too you have a problem where you, they won't want to fit in. Well here's a little trick that you can use. Just use a pair of pliers and you can press fit them right in there and they fit right into place. Because you want them kind of tight so they don't spin themselves inside there. So let's go ahead and put all of the bearings inside here and then we're going to put the, the backup spring. And the way to me has done this too, there are two different types of spring that look very very similar to each other but one of them is done in black one of them done in a chrome color so you'll be able to differentiate between the two of them there so I'm gonna go ahead and build up all these pieces and we'll go ahead and attach them to the uh, hull okay now we're going to attach the suspension mounts that you saw me start to put together earlier where we put the uh, the bearing in place we've also attached two lock nuts that just fit into place there now I left the spring out and that is because it's going to be easier to actually install the spring after we put it up inside the, the vehicle rather than have it keep falling out on us. So the easy thing to do is we're going to take this, line it up, making sure that that gap is up on the top. Pop that into place there. And from this side it should line up with the holes, which you can see it does. And then it's just a matter of going in here and sliding the spring up through that hole just like that and then putting the outer piece like that and then just the last two screws go into place and we're gonna assemble and build each one of these separately for the one reason that way we keep them all in order and we don't have to worry about getting the wrong one in the wrong side so these are we're doing all A first and once we get all the A's then we'll work on the B's and then in finally into the C's. This way we can tighten it down, keep everything in order and putting the spring in is actually easier from this side rather than trying to mount it in there without it falling out. So we've got a few of those to put together uh, as you can see quite a few actually so I'm going to get all those put together and then I'll show you the next step. 
Okay, I've got all the suspension mounts uh, lined up in here and screwed into place, and they all fit really well. Now in the front, I've mounted the metal support bracket that holds the front end, plus the three screws that hold in the idler wheel here, and that locks it in nice and tight. For the very front plate, or actually this is the back, excuse me, the back plate is fitted into place with some press fittings, and then there are two lock washers that fit in on this side and that'll hold it in the place nice and secure and that'll be the same for the front of the vehicle the front of the vehicle will have another brace that goes across and two more lock washers so I have both of the gearboxes assembled now and you can see they are different in size and that is mainly so they can get them both to fit evenly in the back here I was going to film actually putting all the gears together but it was actually way way easier to concentrate with the piece right here in front of me rather than having a big camera in front there but as you can see by the instructions it's actually pretty straightforward you just follow those along the only thing that was a little bit difficult was some of the gears they I would have been nice if they would have told us if it was plastic or metal just to help find it a little bit quicker this stuff is wonderful for finding all the little pieces but some of the gears I was like wondering is that the metal one or is that the plastic one and after a few minutes you can figure out by the shape and everything which one it is it just made the uh, the process go a little bit faster if it had been you know labeled metal or plastic on it so now with those built up get my instructions to make sure I'm doing it right here Yes, we can go ahead and mount these into the vehicle. And this one comes in at this angle. And like that, we will have both of our gearboxes. And there's a couple of screws that fit in from both sides. And I'll go ahead and lock those down right now. Now I'm just attaching the, uh, the speaker into its uh, case here and there's not much to building this. We did have to put some screws in here to build this channel. We'll run the wires through that and then screw this all together. Got a couple more screws in there and this is our uh, the, the speaker housing and all this will create a lot more echo and a lot more deeper sound inside of it. Okay that's all screwed together now and it'll slide right into place here. And just a couple of screws to the bottom, we'll attach that into place. Sound system is now in and now it is time to attach the brains of the tank. And that is the DMD unit that you see right here. The DMD unit is the complete brain system that runs everything. The motors, the electronics, the sound, all of that stuff. And what we're going to do with this is, this will get as you can see all the double sided tape that'll get mounted right into place here this long cable will go through here we've got some brackets that we need to secure to keep everything nice and neat and tidy then we're going to take the radio receiver this actually comes in the remote control unit so this came right out of the remote control unit box it is going to get mounted right here we have the uh, the cables that'll plug in here for the four channels of the radio plug into that these units right here are the on and off switch that will get mounted over here and an LED showing that it's on and then we can finally attach the sound as well as the two motors all to the DMD unit all at one piece. So it, they've made it super simple. It's a very sophisticated computer that runs all this because it's a four channel radio that will do like the 12 to 16 functions depending on which one it is of all of these things. So it's, it's quite a piece in here and very simple just plugging in a couple little cables so I'm gonna get all this mounted down all the cables secure and we will move on to start building the uh, the turret I guess before we build the turret we have to work on the upper hull so I misspoke about that what we've done here is I've just gone ahead and attached the ring for the turret and also the turret limitation switch which is right here so when the turret goes a certain point hits that switch and kills it 
and now what we have to put on are these little really high powered magnets and they're inside a plastic housing we will glue them into place here as well as the engine deck here and this way we can get at the DMD unit just by removing the panel as well as the battery compartment over here too so that'll make it nice and easy on that and then as soon as we get the other side done we've got our ball bearings and if you guys ever watch me put together the the Abrams it's the same thing we'll mount this together and drop the ball bearings in here so we'll get a nice real smooth action on the turret so let me first get these uh, high-powered magnets glued into place and then we'll start working on the turret ring to build up the turret ring we just have to install these little spacers that go all the way around just like this they kind of lock into place here we will slide it up through the bottom here I need to put these little ball bearings which I will do off camera because it's a lot of little fiddly stuff getting one inside each one of the hole once we get the ball bearings in I'll be able to go ahead and lock somehow this goes yeah there it goes just like that and it kind of click locks and then there's three little screws that will screw it in together and we'll have our ball bearing glides set up for the turret ring Next we're going to work on the turret rotation motor and drive system. So we need to install, yeah this goes straight up like this. Followed by this pin and finally this gear. And then there's a worm drive on this one that we slide into place here just like that and just have to secure both sides of these together we've got the uh, the turret gear and now we can attach the turret drive motor it'll get screwed right into place just like this And there'll be two more screws that we'll put in there. We also need to start wiring the harness for the headlights and the taillights. So this is A, we want to make sure that travels through that side. The B travels through this side. C and D will go for, actually these are the taillights, excuse me. C and D are for the front lights. They'll get put in in a little bit. But we need to glue these little brackets in and that secures the light into place. So if, as of right now, the bulb will just be hanging out there and we'll put the fixture on later, but this way it can't be pulled through, so we need to glue that in right now. Okay, I'm attaching the periscopes inside the driver's hatch right now. Now, one thing I should point out to you, I'm skipping a few steps as we go along the way, and these are steps that require us to put in clear parts. And that is because it's going to be a lot easier to paint these parts, or paint the entire vehicle, without the clear parts in. And one of those is the periscopes that we can actually slide in at a later time after we've got it done. And that is going to be the same way we're doing with the lights. As you can see back here, I've just temporarily taken some masking tape and mask those back there just so they don't fall out and get pulled out by any um, way but actually putting the lens in right now wouldn't really make a lot of sense because if we do that we could get paint on the lens and we want to obviously keep that as clear as possible so once we have that portion done we can go ahead and snap the driver's hatch in place we will glue that with that pin and the same thing with the uh, the front headlights here we will pop these in, mask those off, and put the locking piece, this thing right in here. This holds the light in place until we actually get the rest of the light fixture around it. So we're going to do all that right now. There's also a glass piece that goes up front here that you can see I've left out as well because it will just be more masking, but we can actually just slide it into place after we're done. We're attaching the uh, parts of the lower part of the turret. As you can see right here, inside each one of these are the three magnets, just like we did on the, uh, the other parts. And now we're attaching the board as it sits in here. This has all the connections for the lights and the servos that will be in the turret. Just got to line that up. 
just going to put one of those in right now. We'll put the rest of them in in a few minutes. And then we can attach the servo. And the way the servo mounts is there's some other adapters here that will lock it in. And then that will get screwed in just like this. I'll finish screwing that down in a minute there. And then now we can work on the barrel that is Okay, we're going to start building up the next servo that goes in for the barrel and that mounts inside here and then the other side gets screwed together, leaving this exposed. We'll glue, we'll screw that together in a minute. And I've started uh, gluing a few pieces on here and then attached the little machine gun light, which I'm going to show it to you up inside there. Just a little screw with a clamp and holding this. This was the most nightmarish thing I've ever <laughs> tried to put together. This took me about about 20 minutes to finally get in there properly. I kept losing it. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I could not get that to fit. Finally, was able to snap it inside there, but uh, wow, that was a lot of work. And uh, then we will attach this barrel in here. And let me get these, these little parts screwed together and I'll come right back and show you the next step. Okay, I just put a little glue on here and screwed the two halves of this housing for the servo. Now we can mount this piece, which is a super tight fit, but we want to make sure that slides all the way on there. I don't think we're going to need any glue on that. That's pretty tight. And with that, we can slide this into here. Now we also need to run the barrel light down the entire thing too. So we've got a pretty good straight shot being that it's open, but we'll put this piece coming out here. Just like that, run that down there. Then we have the aluminum barrel that Tamiya provides with it. This is gonna... And we need to slide that through just so it sticks out just to that point. Okay, now we've got this little brass piece we're putting on. And only that little one will work on it. And that goes inside the servo. Snap that on, and this will move the barrel in and out once we fire it. Now we'll pull this through. There is a, a muzzle brake, not a muzzle brake, an end cap on this that is clear that we will put on last after we're done painting it to see how it attaches. But once this part is done, this whole piece slides through the middle here and we'll get mounted. That little piece slides right inside there. So that'll do the elevation and then the other one will do the recoil on the barrel. And like I was saying earlier, since we have a little bit of time to mess around with some of these things, we can work on some of the upper portions of the turret, some of the accessories, and in this case we're working on the commander's cupola. We've kind of jumped a little bit ahead here. I started putting on all of the accessories on the turret. We've got the light fitted into place here, all wired up. And I've gone around and just basically masked off everything because we do need to kind of take part of it 
down like we're gonna pull the tracks off here and I've gone ahead and masked any holes like right in through here the engine the louvers on the engine deck all of that's been masked from underneath the lights we've masked all of those the front glass here I first I thought I was gonna be able to just do it the other way and put them on later which we will do on this piece because I can get the glass pieces into the cupola very easily uh, I will have to go over and mask all this off too because I want to avoid any type of overspray of paint getting on any of the electronics inside here. So I've gone over everything including all that stuff, all the lights, and I think we've got it down where we've sealed it up pretty well. Now I've not attached any of these things. These are kind of like sitting in their brackets uh, ready to go. Same thing with the top. The top actually never gets attached any more than just locked into place with the uh, the parts on it. I will go ahead and pull the tracks off here because we want to keep those without paint on it and we also want to get up inside of the hull in here and paint that all up into the olive drab too. So I've got a few more parts to do on that and then I'll probably just going to use uh, Tamiya's TS5 uh, I believe it is the dark olive drab to put one coat on it. I can always go back later on and airbrush some lighter tones of olive drab to make it look faded, but for right now I want to put a good durable coat down of lacquer paint because we are going to be playing around with this and that will really protect all of the outer surfaces. I've sprayed the entire model once with uh, TS5 olive drab, sprayed the entire model. That's the darker of the two olive drabs that they have in a spray can. Also notice I've gone ahead and put the tools on, have painted those up. Uh, except for the uh, the pick, I've got that drawing still right now. Uh, I've got a video on doing tools if you want to watch that right there, but that's exactly how I did those. It's really simple to do. Also started doing some of the detailed painting of like straps, things like that, and we've also popped all of the glass in and taken all of the masking off for everything else on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this thing a test fire up and turn this on here. We've got a green light. Hopefully you can see the green light flashing now red. So let's turn the power or the power on here. Now this is going to get loud. Okay, we're going to turn that off right now, listen to the engine wide down, it, that is really cool. So as you heard, we fired the machine gun, fired the cannon, rocks the entire vehicle back when it fires off there. Uh, we can do elevation. Everything seems to be working great. I'm really, really excited about this. I can't wait to get this on the floor and start playing around. In fact, I probably will play around with it a little bit before we put all the weathering on. One other thing we've done up is I've painted up the separate pieces to do the M2 50 cal machine gun, which we are going to put into place here. And that will just get dropped in there. We'll glue that in in a few minutes. Uh, I've also started to assemble the figure. Not going to paint him up right away because I actually want to play with this a little bit and we'll do some weathering on it. So what I'm going to do this is I'm going to put this on the floor right now and drive it around there and I'll show you guys what that looks like.
I've got a little bit of decal work to put on this. So I'm putting a little mark fit strong down underneath. It's probably not super necessary on these flat surfaces, but I like it to soften the decal from both sides. And on this particular model, we have our number. They only give you one set of markings on here. So we've got the US Army one that goes here, a little symbol. Uh, I started putting the white stripe across the barrel and the two little chest pieces on the barrel. That's on the other side right now. And we've just got, a, I think there's like a grand total of like 10 decals that we need to put on here. So we'll go ahead and put those on, finish that off, kind of mask around some of these areas, and then we'll clear coat them in so they don't pop off, especially, you know, using it as much as we are. So we'll go ahead and finish those up now. Okay, we are now done completely with all the electronics and all the construction. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going over all the little rivets and detail things like that with some black panel liner some streaking grime and just lightly weathering the vehicle we don't I don't want to go overboard on this because this is going to get run a lot so doing the tracks and the wheels like you can see right here would kind of be or actually the inside of the wheel I did do a little bit of weathering but the tracks themselves that's going to wear right off on any type of driving that we're going to do now I've weathered a little bit on the side here and then we're going to put once everything is dry one more shot of clear coat on here to get rid of all the uh, the water streaks that are on there but um, one other quick thing too uh, the the rubber part of the tire here is plastic and we had to paint that so I'm a little concerned that we're going to be wearing that off as we drive it around so we might have to go back and keep constantly painting that I wish to me it would have actually made that one out of rubber on the tire that would have made it held up a little bit better but that's a minor thing uh, as you can see we got uh, everything's on it right there I'll probably build some kind of antenna for it eventually I'm charging up um, all the batteries I have for it now so we'll be able to put it through all its paces very very soon here and show you all the different uh, aspects of running one of their RC tanks and they're actually pretty simple to put together and just following the instructions and then just programming the RC unit which I'll talk a little bit about that and kind of show you because I messed around with it already and as I was doing it I actually messed it up the first time because I didn't follow the instructions exactly or thought I had but uh, realized later on I did not so I could only get the thing to run in reverse but that was an easy fix once I realized what I had done wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish up the weathering on this. Like I said, nothing heavy. Just going to get it to look like it's a little bit of dirt and grime. Give it one quick shot of dull coat, and then we're going to show you how it drives. Okay, guys, we are all done. We are ready to start having some fun with this thing. First of all, I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the paces and just show you how the electronics kind of work on this, and then we'll play around with it. One other thing, too, to point out, uh, something that delayed me almost two days I had my charger and had my battery the charging unit came with an adapter on it called EC3 I unfortunately had a Tamiya connector on my battery and need which I needed obviously but I needed to go find a Tamiya connector for this cut this off and rewire it so it's the proper one to charge the battery so I wasn't able to charge a battery for a few days so what we'll do right now is we're going to go through all of its functions. I've got a brand new charged battery inside and we are going to turn it on. It might get a little bit loud. I'll turn the speaker so we can hear it. Here we go. And most of the functions are controlled by how you adjust these. So for example, if we pull this down here and then Move it up. We've got our machine gun back down, and it takes about about 10, 12 seconds to reload. So we're ready to fire again. And then when you want to put it back in neutral, there's the barrel. And on this side. Put this all the way to the right and then just keep it on you just have to put it back to neutral and our searchlights on and then to turn it off back to neutral 
Also, thought I would open up the rear engine deck here that I told you just magnetizes right on there and show you the DMD unit, which is the computer control unit. And you can scroll through all kinds of different functions. We can raise the volume even louder than what we have right now. We can set it to be a, a light tank, a heavy tank. Uh, it makes all kinds of different adjustments. Now, it's pre-programmed to be for the M551, and I'm just going to leave it the way it is, but there is a lot of opportunity to change things around. Plus, you can also put the, uh, the fighting units in it, which fits inside the cupola here, and you can actually control fighting between two tanks. There's an infrared beam that'll hit it, and it'll you know knock out the other tank, do all kinds of fun things with it. So, lots of opportunities with it. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Hey Andy, can that thing jump? Let's try out, because that's what I'm thinking right now. Well, there you go, guys. Here's the complete build video slash having a little fun with it, which you, if you just watch that last little section, you can see we're going to have lots of fun with this between the machine gun, cannon fire, how fast the actual vehicle goes. And yes, it can jump clearly right there. It was a lot of fun. And if it ever actually cools off here in Arizona, I'll take this outside maybe on one of the... Uh, the uh, scale model talks we'll put a little video of that of once it cools off because it's still like 109 today and and a little humid too so i don't want to step foot outside there but uh great kit to put together lots and lots of parts there's no denying that but if you follow the instructions clearly uh it, you shouldn't have any problem with it there there's that one little area where the metal and plastic gears that i talked about earlier but it, it was a minor little thing that would have helped but if you really look at the part you can see which one is which on it so I would definitely re not recommend this for someone younger. You're probably going to need an adult supervision because it is have so many little parts in there and lining up all the screws and getting all the motors and stuff to work. Plus, there's a rather large operation manual. Now, this is in multiple languages, so it's not all of that, but it's to get the uh, four servo or four uh, channels to operate all the different functions on it. And, you, and I showed you that earlier how by adjusting the uh, switches on it, you can get it to do all kinds of cool things. So yeah, I would uh, I would definitely recommend this is a, a fun fun toy to have. In fact, I would wouldn't mind getting some of the uh, the World War II ones and then eventually the battle units and fight those out. This looks like a lot of fun to have. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.